Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to RTG TV. Apologies for the very late start. Wasn't able to get the stream sorted for some reason, but then logged out and logged back in again. And it seems to be working. As you can see, we've got wet conditions here. But before you could see what I could see, uh, it was dry conditions. You can hear me twice in the background there. Apologies, I'll turn that off. Uh, yeah, so it was dry conditions. Uh, Paul Jones on provisional pole, soon to be pole position, unless the rain decides to stop and the track decides to clear up within the next three or four minutes, which isn't going to happen. So Paul Jones will be on pole for this sprint race, which will be 27 laps. As you can see, we are here at Interlagos, Brazil, one of the best tracks on the Formula One Canada. Two DRS zones around this circuit. 15 corners it's 4.309 kilometers in uh, and 2.677 miles in length uh we're going to be running which i've lost actually oh i do apologize to have the uh, compounds up but no matter we're running the intermediates at the moment with drivers doing some intermediate lap times you never know guys it could be a wet sprint or race later on so actually maybe getting a few laps here And as Jay was saying, he's in fifth at the moment. He said he's happy with P5 and he will take that. It was a 1082 for pole position. Uh, last time that I've got a, a note for a stat for pole, it was a 107.8. So we were a little off that. Uh, about three or four minutes to go, or four or five minutes to go in qualifying, unless everyone retires thank you for everyone as well for putting your ids on it's just for my telemetry app i still get the basic info which is still best than what we get in the game uh, from when we trialed it before where people actually turn their full telemetry on thank you if you have got your full telemetry on but you don't have to because i understand that it can mess around with your internet a little bit so i uh, as i said i do appreciate i do appreciate you putting your things on because previously you'd hear me go a bit quiet and that was me actually uh, after a while, I was using the, the, the mic on the keyboard, um, but I was putting everyone's names in manually because it would just come up as player, and it's quite hard to keep track to correlate with the screen uh, on my TV and my phone, uh, which is where I've got this little mini stat. I've got a couple of screens in front of me now, three in total, including the TV screen now, so I've got it all going on stats uh, and what have you. We've got stats for qualifying. And so Paul Jones is going to take pole here. It's his first time driving in burnt rubber racing. Joined the joined the server only a few hours ago, I think. I think it was today he joined. Uh, so he'll be taking pole. So we won't have a stat for that for a full-time driver this week. Mark Bow is taking one of those four pole positions. Chuck was taking two. And his brother Chuck is taking the other pole position. So, we've got Bishop for M. Harry as well. He's not around today. Jundy Sunday getting himself into the top three. First time this season he has been able to do that. He hasn't even qualified. He's, he's, he's qualified four times out of five inside the top ten, but never in the top three. And this time it will be one of those. It will be fifth time, fifth, a fifth time for Mark Bow qualifying inside the top three as well as Chuck just misses out by a fraction, an absolute fraction of a second there. Two thousandths of a second between him and Jundi Sunday. That was very, very close. Again, apologies for the late start and hopefully we'll have a good sprint and race after that. At least you've got a little bit more content. As seen, seeing as you missed out on some, at least you get a little bit more today with the sprint as we wait for everyone to retire. Apologies for the announcer in the background. It's very, very loud today. It's actually putting me off. It's so loud. So apologies for that. I'll try and talk over her as she tries to relay uh, some stats to the, uh, the fake crowd. Um, but anyway, we're here for round six in Brazil. Oh, golly. I show I was all flustered. We didn't even do the standing, so we'll do that quickly. Uh, Chuck leading the way at the moment. He's got two wins to his name this season. Three wins to his name, should I say. Uh, getting those points in the sprint as well in Spain. Uh, the second place is Mark Bow. Ginger's third. Chuckle is fourth. Fifth is Super Striker. And the Constructors' top three. Williams are leading the way. Unsurprisingly, they're on... 
121 points, 90 points for Mercedes, and the McLarens are on 80 points in third place. If they do get points for reserve, which I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure about. If they are, they might be in a good position with having Paul Jones as one of their reserves this evening as we wait for the clock to count down to zero. And we'll get underway for this 12 lap sprint and then get into the full race of 36 laps, which of course, um, the sprint is a third of our race distance, which works out as about 15% in true terms of a full Grand Prix, the 12 laps. It's a nice amount of laps, so to get a bit of racing under our belts, no pit stops, low fuels, it is pretty much doing uh, qualifying laps. There's not that many laps at all. So it should be an interesting one as we're now getting into the last 10 seconds of qualifying. And it will be a McLaren and a Mercedes sharing that front row with Jundi Sunday just behind in third place. So there you have it. Paul Jones on pole for his first race in Burnt Rubber Racing. Mark, uh, Mark Bow in second. Third is Jundi Sunday. Chuck is fourth. Fifth is Jay-Z. Chuckle is sixth. Seventh is always grinding. Eighth is Morph. Ninth is Beer. Super Striker is 10th, Super Calc on 11th, 12th is Lee, 13th is Bootneck, 14th is Matthew, Murph is 15th, 16th is Dave, Fenty Smith is in 17th, 18th is Percival, 19th, uh, 18th is Steve, oh, sorry, 19th is Percival, and 20th in the last is Pro Life, who actually was disqualified. So just remember, there is a formation lap in Burnt River Racing, so we will be able to digest what tyres everyone are on for the start of this sprint. 12 laps, remember, with that McLaren and Mercedes sharing that front row. And who is going to be leading out of the centre S and down the Retro Posta towards turn four and five? Uh, De Cida de Lago, um, only time will tell. We might see that battle go on into turn six and seven. Farad Jula uh, and end up maybe at the no name of turn eight. Uh, turn nine, Pirellino as well. Might see them there. We've got some fantastic corners here. Of course, Young Cal as well. A very important corner to get right here is your full throttle all the way from turn 12, Young Cal through 13, 14, 15, and all the way uh, then going up and then slightly downhill to the braking zone of turn one and then fully descending through the center s so it's super important to get a good launch out of young cal otherwise you could be a sitting duck on this race especially with people running with a lot of battery usage left and save that up and of course having drs to their disposal as well So here we go, getting ready for that formation lap. As I said, we'll see whose tyres are on what car. See what tyres on whose car, shall I say, wrong way around. So obviously the majority on soft tyres. You can already see that on my screen. Here you go, on your screen. And then from 8th back, we've got a bit of a mix. But as I said, it's about 80%, 85% of the drivers on soft tyres. No surprise, you can actually do a one-stop strategy here on that soft and medium, uh, going which way or the other, which, whichever you would prefer to do. So, obviously, no one going to be choosing that hard tyre. That's a, that's a no-brainer. That would just really pretty much at the end of lap one could leave you with just egg on your face really at that point so 
So just coming down through Magulio and into that young cow, which I spoke a lot about before this formation lap. It's so important to get that corner right. It's just absolutely crucial to get it right through there as we wait for Paul Jones to line up on that front row alongside Mark Bow. As Prolife now exits Young Cow, and we're all 20 cars are on that start finish straight now, getting ready to prep themselves for the start. It's lucky that the game holds you here at Interlagos as well, because actually the grid is slightly uphill. So if, if they didn't, you'd actually have to keep your foot, your left foot, on that brake pedal whilst um, setting the revs and then releasing the clutch and the brake at the same time, which they do have to do, because it is, as you can see, even from our screens, it is an uphill. Uh, start to proceedings here as Pro Life gets himself into position and we now wait for those five lights to start going out. We've got one, two, three, four, and five red lights. And we're away here in Brazil for the sprint race. And Paul Jones gets a decent launch here. But so does Mark Bow. He's almost alongside as we go into turn one. And so is Jundi Sunday trying to go the long way round. Now the inside at turn two of the Senna S. Through turn three, Kerba de Sol. And down the rest of Raposta we go to Decida de Lago. As Chuckle now dives into that slipstream. Trying to pull out to the left-hand side. Maybe going for a bit of a lunge into the next corner. But he isn't. As Super Calgon tries to go for a bit of a lunge here. On Lee as they both go wide through to see the Lago and now up the hill towards Farajula we go into seven and eight now. And no one really actually switching places at all. We're going to see Matthew go for a lunge here at turn eight. No, but we're going to see Morph off the road at turn eight and through Perolino turn nine, losing more and more places to the Al Alfa Romeo of Full Send Dave as well as we wait for Ben T. Smith to potentially go for a move here. As you see the Red Bull of Bish cutting the corner not really much of a shortcut for him there as he now goes side by side through Magudio he's now down towards the very back as Paul Jones leads us on to the second lap after starting on pole at the first as we go down to turn one once again this time at full racing speed no moves yet to uh, report on at turn one but are we going to see one from Morth? Maybe. We're being quite civil here. Is Chuckle now, after being in that slipstream on the last lap down the Retro Apostle, pulls out and moves up into fifth place. Oh, sorry, guys. Just. Oh, bear with me a sec. Just try and keep an eye. Look at that as well. Chuck already one and a half seconds almost ahead of fifth place. But of course, Chuckle and Jay Z have been fighting for that fifth place the last lap or two. Is Mark Bow going to go for the lead place here? He'd be wise to wait as we're going to have DRS available down the rest of Raposa next time around. Trying to go the long way round here is Jundi Sunday's fighting with Chuck as he's also trying to go the long way round. As I said, DRS enabled around the curve of Soul. When we get the DRS activation point, it's open for Mark Bow. And the overtake potentially on for him here as well. No, not just yet. As we look further back down that rest of Raposa, you see the Alfa Romeo there in the background going off the circuit is Bootneck. And dives in in the McLaren holding on to that 12th because he's got some cars behind him as Murph overtakes Morph and then full sudden Dave gets past Murph and Morph as they came together and Murph went off the circuit that was quite hard to say I can tell you as we go through Ferragula now and up the hill from two, turn 6 and 7 and into turn 8 Matthew still staying in 12th place as full sudden Dave has moved up a couple of places as Pro Live now going up the inside of Ben T. Smith for that 16th place As we now make our way back again through Young Cal and up the hill towards that start finish line where the slipstream is powerful, effective, and lovely for the attacking car. Not so much for the defending car unless they have a dose of DRS themselves into turns one and two. And around turn three. And again, 
we have to wait and see if any of these guys decide to go for that overtake at the end of this straight. No. None of the drivers at the front. Maybe Lee's going to go for it here. He thinks about it on Super Calgon as Morph gets past Fulton Dave this time as they were fighting on the last lap. But Fulton Dave having none of it, trying to come back at him. He is on that soft tyre, remember? So he's going to have to use them to his advantage in these early phases of the race. That 4 of 12 here in the sprint on RTG TV, watching Burnt Rubber Racing. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep watching three days worth of content on this channel too from the founders of the league, uh, founders of this uh, renamed channel, um, RTG, and then the, the guest appearance for season one of Burnt Rubber Racing, which is closely tied to RTG with its drivers. So I invited them along to take part on the channel this season until they form their own and go off on their separate ways but we're obviously trying to get a bit of a following here and it's lovely to see the 20 drivers as well as we go on to lap five and another rtg racer joining burnt river racing paul jones our leader is we've got these guys fighting tooth and nail for the final places on the grid of course this will set for the race look at that commentator's curse i said paul jones leading the way as we now have the first retiree it's ben t smith we have a safety car deployed under this uh, uh, on this sprint race uh, ben actually crashed out there at the uh, exit of Curva de Sol. You just see the tyre marks there. He's gone off the road there, actually. His car's already gone. The final car actually getting past the safety car. So the safety car only now has to worry about picking up the leader. And I'm sure no one is going to pit. And if someone does pit, I'm sure everyone will. Because that's usually the way of it, to be honest. Ben Smith complaining about moving under braking there and that might be the reason why he is out that's what he believes just so you know as well track temperature is 30 degrees what 22 degree air temperature as well it's a lovely sunny afternoon here in Interlagos as we wait for the leader Mark Boat to pick up that safety car So we'll have this lap under the safety car. We'll have the next one as we wait for Murph and Steve-O to catch up as well. But we always have two full laps uh, following a safety car as uh, as standard, really. Unless we're getting right to the end of the race. So I think the game can shortcut and just do one lap. It has done that in the past. I think the most we can do is around four laps. Now this could potentially really help. drivers on softs here it just gives them that couple of extra uh, extra laps worth of, of life at the very end the only thing they've got to focus on is getting the battery charged up that's one of the most important things for them sorry just bear with me a second guys So what was that, Liam? You're predicting you're predicting drama before the race? Were you? Nice to know. Nice to know. That's another one as well. I like to do a little bit of plugging now and again. 
for anyone which some of you guys are who are, are from red arrows racing on a monday check out their their channel they race on a, a monday night same time as uh, rtg as well so flick between the two if you you ever just join in to watch it's just red arrows racing uh so subscribe to their channel as well and keep an eye on their their content on the monday night got some uh, really interesting formats going on there no qualifying for this week it was a sprint race reverse championship constructors championship grid order for the sprint and then went to the race at monza a week before that we were in france and we had to use all three compounds in the race that made it interesting so basically a mandatory two-stop strategy uh, for that one that was also interesting there's going to be some other new formats as well so flip between rcg on a monday night and red arrows as well and subscribe to their channel as long as well as this one so safety car in mark boat getting ready to set off again and get the pack racing for the last five laps interesting restart this track has to offer because it's such a long straight here and you want to wait till right towards the very end or catch people off guard as Jundi Sunday there has actually got a very slow launch and Chuck had to actually back out as he's overtaken him and of course that's not allowed now leaves Chuckle to go for the move on his brother here into turns one and two of course the center rest is Jundi Sunday now gets a three second time penalty as well after holding everyone up and losing around two seconds to the leader or two and a half seconds if you're in fourth place as Chuckle now tries to go up the inside, but then the switch back for his bro from his brother that gets him back past again is Chuckle actually had a bit of a switch on on the exit of the corner when he got on to the power there is now Jay-Z following suit as well and hoping to make up some places as the rampant two Ferraris are um, just on his gearbox and his rearview mirror is full up of that Scuderia Red as we go down into Pico de Pato and out to Magula and obviously down the hill in this roller coaster of a track into Young Cow out of the final braking zone and it's flat to the floor before the Senna S. And saying that, I think Chuckle got a foot flat to the floor a little bit too quickly there because he was again seesawing at the wheel and trying to get the uh, car in a straight line wrestling that, that, um, that red ball. The super striker now getting past Jay-Z and Jay-Z now got a Scuderia red and a Scuderia red behind him. Scuderia red in front and behind, should I say. Is Paul Jones going to try and take back the lead without DRS to help him along? Or is he going to wait for the next time around where he will have DRS down that straight? really seems like the closest and most interesting battle really i mean chuck is so close to jundi sunday as well but of course he has that three second time panel to to his name now which he isn't going to be able to get rid of uh, not even in a um in a report you know to appeal the decision because we go straight into the race it's somewhere where we can't really police uh, any of those any of those decisions really if they do try to appeal it Seeing all the guys now make their way out of Young Cal and up the hill. And we're going to have DRS enabled when we get on to lap 10, which we are now with the lead pack. And Mark Bow now going to have to be looking in his mirror. Is it that Papaya McLaren? He's going to want that place and feels like it, it should be his as well. Down the back straight we go. DRS open, but not close enough. But who is close enough is Super Striker to get a, a move done on Chuckle here as Chuckle now tries to switch back another great corner to get those kind of switchbacks done is turn five the the second part of De Silva Lago is an interesting one as well and you can fight all the way up the hill oh again Chuckle just out of sorts in the last few laps after restarting after the safety car and really really struggling to manage the car that's underneath him So we're about to go on to the penultimate lap. Paul Jones has that DRS to his advantage now. And how is he going to use it effectively? 
is generally Sunday's fighting with Chuck. As they make their way through Kirby de Sol and down the Retta Aposta towards turn four and five. As you see in the background there, Chuck now getting past Jundi Sunday, but he does have that three second time penalty. So he didn't need to do it, but maybe he wants to try and catch this lead pack as they try and fight away to see who will see the checkered flag first. And crucially have that pole position for the 36 lap race coming up in uh, around five or six minutes time. Both on the soft tyres as well, seeming like the softs are actually the better tyre. The, the first driver on the mediums is Super Striker. Maybe this last lap might come back to him, but it's a tall order for that to happen. It's a big ask for him to see if that could happen as well. As we make our way out to the final corners. And here comes Paul Jones. And he's already well and truly passed a good three or four car lengths past before we get to the turn one in the Senna S as we now go through Curva de Sol and down the Retta Aposta for the last time in the sprint race. Is he going to use the DRS effectively down the back straight or is he going to wait for a drag race out of Yonkau, which we see so often here at Interlagos? Around turn five we go and up the hill towards Ferro Julia of six and seven. And this is where the gloves are off and it's Less of a gentlemanly boxing match and more of a, a backstreet brawl in this last few corners of the sprint. As we make our way round Magudio, going to keep an eye on these front two. Mark Bow, over half a second behind now. He's going to have to get the exit of his life and probably of the evening as well to try and see if he can get alongside to the line. I don't think that's going to happen. He's getting closer, but I don't think it's going to be close enough. He gets even closer, but Paul Jones wins the sprint. He gets pole for the race. Mark Bow will finish in second. Chuck will finish in third place and starting on that second row alongside his brother in the Red Bull. And Jundi Sunday now moves down into fifth place. Look how close it was though between Super Calgon and Super Striker. Close in name, close by time. Uh, what happened between Super Striker? They were less than half a tenth between them. That's how close they were. So that sprint result means Paul Jones started the sprint on pole. He continues to stay on pole for the race. Mark Bow will start second. Third is Chuck. Fourth is Chuck or Jundi Sunday is fifth. Sixth is always grinding. Super Calgon is seventh and Super Striker is eighth. Uh, Matthew is ninth. Tenth is Jay-Z. Morph is 11th. Twelfth is Murph. 13th is Bish, Bootneck is 14th, 15th is Lee, Full Send Dave is 16th, Percival is 17th, 18th is Pro-Live, Steve-O is 19th and he was one lap down and the only driver not to finish the sprint was Ben T. Smith and he's starting 20th and last. And we have very, very different conditions from... Uh, when we were in the sprint torrential can see puddles down the pit lane it's going to be full wet tyres for the start are we going to see it dry up in the race or is it going to be like this for the foreseeable future you never know here in Brazil there's always a, a chance of mixed conditions and there's always a chance of rain and, and there you have it we've had it twice this evening so far
so there'll be 36 laps to race in the sprint right sorry in the race that would be a very long sprint wouldn't it in the race and hopefully it'll be a good one as we just wait to to get started so with paul jones winning the sprint we do have two different winners even though he is a reserve. The, the only other driver to win a sprint was Mark Bowe. So he's the only other driver to finish in the top three in sprints as well. Uh, so now as we get on to the race, I think we had a reserve winner last week. Did we? I think we did. I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, which means Mark Bowe's on a win three wins for for chuck who won in spain as well we get this formation lap underway i can see blue banded tires there's so much tread on them it's very clear it's going to be full wet conditions is it going to be like this for the the entirety of the race who knows it the, the weather is saying it's it's not great by any means not great whatsoever It's a whole different ball game to what we've been used to at this point now. Everyone's got to be on their toes. I, I, I'm sure we're going to see more mistakes. It, it's bound to happen in these conditions. I'm not even going to say I'm going to jinx anyone with that because it's just it, it's just one of those things when you come to these conditions. Hopefully the weather will get a bit better, but it is absolutely torrential out there. It is horrendous. There is puddles all over the circuit. They say... F uh, Code Masters EA say that you can wear flags for the weather being too bad. I don't know if they'll do that in online races. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. We'll actually come a quick look whilst we're on the formation lap. I think we should have red flags on. Rules and flags. Red flags reduced. So red flags are reduced uh, in Burnt River Racing. But we can still have them, potentially have them in these conditions. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we did. So... As we all now make their as they all now make their way up the hill to that start finish line. As I said, the start's a very different prospect. Um, usually for me, preference when I I, I still do. I'm just having some time off from this game. I'm not gonna play this game anymore. Hopefully the next one will be better. Got my doubts, but hopefully it will be. Um, yeah, wet conditions. I straight hold hold the uh, upshift panel, this clutch. Then when the lights go out first and then click it straight away, go straight into second, then straight up to third, dull out the wheel spin, try and get the best launch you can, uh, knowing that it's not going to be very good anyway. It never feels good in conditions like this as you wait for drivers to line up on the grid. Bootneck getting disqualified there, going too long in the box as we wait to get started and we wait for the lights to go out we've got one two three four and five red lights and we're away here in brazil for the race itself on this rainy afternoon and we get underway reasonably well from paul jones but he seems to slip and slide as we go down into turn one he's got mark bow on his inside he's got to be careful of that as we all go through turns two and three there is a yellow flag at the top of the hill as the two leaders is paul jones slipping and sliding and getting off the racing line that would usually mean more grip but in game it isn't the case as you've got to stay on that racing line to get the most amount of grip as jay-z getting past uh, uh matthew at that point in time and now chuckle moving up into third place and everything's up for grabs in this first lap especially in these conditions as we see matthew now try and send it to the inside at ferrajula he gets past and bish tries the same thing tries to follow him through trying to get past Jay-Z, who's now gone wide and completely off the track, and he's lost one, two, three, four places, uh, five places now after turn eight. As Lee's now off the road, trying to keep it on the tarmac, he gets it back on the tarmac just in time. The wall was coming at him thick and fast, so that surely would have uh, <laughs> made him have a little bit of a be a bit of a nervous wreck there as we now exit young cow and jundi sunday getting a good launch there and he's getting closer and closer 
to chuck. Of course, we're not going to have DRS, and everyone's just going to have to hope to late break here and be confident on that left pedal when we go down into long braking zones like we do here at Turn 1. But all we see is literally a, a, just a sea of spray at the moment as Ben T. Smith comes into the pits after he did retire on the first lap, and he's already back in the pits uh, he retired in the, in the sprint. He's in the pits on the first lap, should I say. And Super Striker gets past Super Calgon now as we go down into De Cedar de Lago. The conditions just so bad. I can't remember the last time I've seen it, seen it this bad, really. It's just treacherous I can see it actually seems like cars are aquaplating so much it, it's that bad as you see Chuck they're losing the front end of the car trying to come out of turn nine and the jeweler as well I'm sure that is in no way flat around this corner as Bish now gets past as Matthew seems to have made a mistake there and, and lost a couple of places everyone sort of in the same boat sorry for the bad pun but really are sort of in the same boat really especially in these conditions uh, as we see Jundi Sunday think about it he was given just enough space but it was lovely defending from Chuck actually because he invited him to go there uh, I think he kind of knew he wasn't going to go for as big a launch as he did his Murph uh, now falls down the order is we're watching Chuck actually get out of shape out of turn three which he's done several times this afternoon already and Chuck defends the inside beautifully there and doesn't actually leave enough space but he has left enough space here at turn five for that inside line but Jundi's gonna have to try and go all the way around the outside and in these conditions that is a tall order but maybe not trying to go for a switchback but he's all over the back of Chuck Jundi looking very comfortable in these conditions but not having the straight line speed to to attempt an overtake in any way so he's somewhat just being held up at the moment again all over the back just able to outbreak the Williams by a country mile but also, it's just hurting him on the accelerator pedal. As we see Matthew, I think at Young Cal, he's gone off and he's now back on the circuit again. And is he going to be overtaken by Bootneck as well? I don't think that's going to be the case. Or well, maybe it is actually because he lost so much momentum. Bootneck right with him. And I think that's uh, um, a bit of a habit. That's the word. A bit of a habit that drivers have is not using the battery a lot in wet conditions when they should be. They, the braking zones are longer as Matthew makes another little mistake there and it costs him another place. As we see Bishon always grinding here, trying to fight for that eighth place. But yes, not using the battery as much as they probably should, probably could, um, really, uh, because the braking zones are so much longer. But uh, also, being in wet conditions, just it's, it's another... It's another task at hand, you know, it's more things on your plate to worry about and and actually just thinking about keeping it on the road, even trying to go in somewhat of a straight line. And, and I mean, going around some corners in, in these cars are literally like going in a straight line. I mean, think about uh, a Rouge and Radion and, you know, you're flat out in dry conditions from turn one up to uh, Le Calme at the end of the straight. As uh, Jundi Sunday again here fighting, uh, trying to get past Chuck desperately. And now Chuck actually got within uh, touching distance. Uh, and I say that as he now tries to get past and does to Chuck or what Jundi couldn't do to him. And now Jundi trying to get past Chuck as well as he now goes wide. That might give Jundi an opportunity. It certainly did. But then Chuck again, people struggling out of Curva de Sol. And now it's a bit of a drag race. I think Chuck's given, Chuckle's given that up now and let Jundi through, but it also let Super Striker through after those two came together and Chuckle's mistake. And it's uh, really, really opened the door and it was a bit of a gift for Super Striker to, to get up a couple of places there. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, these conditions, going in a straight line is not easy whatsoever. So the mental task, and as I said, places like Belgium, 
all the way up to the Camel Straight and, and beyond. You, you're flat out, and, and these cars are so easy to, to do that. Uh, but in these conditions, it's, it's just something almost unnatural uh, for driving these cars, because the majority of the time they're driving in uh, either damp, wet conditions, but not torrential like it is here. Uh, this is actually quite rare. You don't see it all that often. And some of those drivers are absolutely loving it and and actually just um, loving these conditions and, and being able to, to show their skill. And, and these kind of conditions also can really show what a driver's got in terms of their skill. They might not have extremely, you know, extraordinary raw pace, um, but when it comes to these conditions, just their, their knack of, you know, the hand-eye coordination, the confidence they have in, car, in the car, uh, and knowing the conditions and, and somewhat it is a bit of a guessing game. You kind of have to be a bit of a magician in these conditions and just kind of six sense where the car's going to go, where the grip levels are, and, and especially in the sim as well. That's extra difficult. Seeing is here is always grinding. Thought about it. Thought about the grip levels in the uh, entry of that corner there on the inside. But I find in Kobas AEA games, Whereas in real life, going off the racing line in these conditions would be better. Staying off the, the stones and, and the marbles, uh, it's actually the, the reverse. And staying on is the better option. Especially trying to stay out of these puddles is generally something now loses a place. And you've got Chuckle again, breathing down his neck. These two came together a couple of laps ago at Curva de Sol. Top two still within one second of one another. Chuck, as I said, dropped back quite a bit now. They've got a they've got a bit of a margin. I mean, Mark Bowe's got a around a four and a half second margin to the next car after Paul Jones. And everyone just doing slower laps as well. They're not, you know, pulling in quicker lap times. So either the weather's getting worse or they're still just sort of tiptoeing and finding their their feet in these conditions as we're already on on lap seven believe it or not as well and you can see that bish as well just getting out of shape and off the racing line where there's absolutely no grip at curve as a soul is always grinding now trying to get past the alpha Romeo of super calgon down into turn one is more thinks about it as well on super calgon he's really is thinking about it and almost bump drafting him through turn five and then they come together and both go into the wall i don't think they're out i think they're both they're both still in but they've both got damage for their troubles as well and we'll have to both go into the pit so i'm sure that might go to the sewage room once we finish today's proceedings but difficult difficult one let's just see that again just going back, having a little look at the replay, and I have a feeling we were on board, as you could see, with Morph, and, and I think he wasn't given enough space at turn one. Turn one, turn four, sorry, at that turn, should I say. Well, there's a close battle going on here, here, always grinding, the American. Trying to get past the fish as Jundi Sunday comes into the pits. And what's he going on? Has he got front wing damage? No, he decides the intermediate tyre is the best tyre. Maybe that's why we're not seeing quicker times from the wets because it's just at that point now where the intermediates might start to be better. I doubt it. There's still a lot, a lot of puddles and standing water on the circuit as Jundi Sunday comes out. Super Calgon is retired in the pits. He's called it a day after that incident. Benty Smith. Uh, stays out. Jundi Sunday out on the inters. He's decided he wants to be the guinea pig, guinea pig of the of the group, and we'll see how he gets on. I doubt he'll get on very well though. I feel like the conditions are still a little bit too wet. It has got better. It is is decreased, and that should mean the track will dry up. But he's maybe done this a few too many laps early. Almost five seconds now. The gap between second and third. As these two start to pull away dramatically, but still not able to, uh, Mark still not able to pull away from, from Paul. Or Paul able to overtake and, and do the same. So, 
similar on pace at the moment and we'll see who decides to come in as super striker decides to come in for an intermediate tyre as well i can't see any other reason why he'd come in so early the wet tyres can last an awful long time yeah there we go green banded intermediates for the ferrari driver and he is going to find himself down in around 14th 15th place once he comes out of the pit lane, we see this big battle, though, going on into turn one. Matthew on Lee, more for Murph. And, oh, I think some of them made contact there. It was really hard to see, actually, because of the spray as Morph and Bootneck now go side by side through Kerba de Sol. And where is Super Striker going to pop out in this? He's going to pop out right in the heart of the battle and just behind and just ahead of Matthew. And Matthew trying to send it to the inside on him. He's on intermediate Super Striker, remember, and they're cold and he's got to get them up to temperature and potentially the conditions aren't the greatest for that tyre just yet. They've taken a bit of a gamble going on the intermediates. Is it going to work? It might do, actually. This might be... The, uh, the thing that causes the chain reaction lets the dominoes fall and everyone else will come in for intermediates is Percival and Super Striker fighting through turn eight and then Jundi Sunday trying to go up the inside using the intermediate to his advantage hoping at this point now it may be the better tyre as they roll on down through Magulio and on the way to Young Cow is Jundi Sunday gets it all sorted out there and now they all come into the pits apart from Mark Bow, who decides to stay out for another lap on this tyre. Where's Paul going to filter out? Because here comes Super Striker. Has he got an undercut? I don't think he has. I think he's too far back to have had an undercut now. And I think the margin was too big anyway for maybe the undercut to be effective. He might get one on Chuck here, but I don't think that's likely either. And I think this might have been the right lap or the next one. The perfect lap, right or perfect lap, to pit for that intermediate tyre. The weather, I said the weather is getting better. We've got Lee out. He's retired in the pits as well. So we're not going to have any interference with safety cars and the like. But is Paul going to be able to get an undercut on Mark Bow? That's the question. Every corner he goes round, the track is getting faster. Super Striker, a purple first sector for him. We'll see if Paul Jones' his second sector is a personal best. It certainly is. It's time for the intermediate. Mark Bow knows it. And this is going to be very close between these two as Paul Jones now makes his way up the hill around turn 14 and 15 and onto the start finish straight. Mark Bow had his tyres done. Car's been serviced. As you hear Paul Jones come down the start finish, he makes his way into turn one, and so is Mark Bow. He's on the uh, on the shorter line though, but the track is a lot tighter, and Paul Jones has got a hell of an undercut here on Mark Bow. And lap nine was the perfect lap to come in for the intermediate, as he's now almost two and a half seconds, and it will be out of. Uh, to see the Largo, two and a half seconds is the gap between first and second now. And Chuck has made a big dent in that margin they had previously. So Mark left that one lap too late. That is for sure. Full send Dave there getting past Bootneck. And look at these guys at the back. 11th all the way down to 16th with time penalties. And a mixture of three and five and eight second time penalties for them. Obviously some of them having a five and then a three to make up the eight. And we got an 11 second penalty for Pro Live. See Bish here looking racy, trying to potentially get past his teammate Chuckle. He's got a five second penalty. I feel like he's lifted off and let his teammate go through.
as we've got it yellow flag in the third sector there i think no that's not bootneck it's not the right color car it's more in the williams he's become a proper at young cow as we've pretty much now done the sprint race distance Is the rain, though, at any point going to stop today as Mark Bowe sets the fastest lap time and he's trying to hunt down Paul Jones? We'll have to see if he can close the gap up. It will be very difficult, I say that. Look at that, 1.8 now. He's gained about half a second. He was leading. He did seem pretty comfortable in the lead as well. That's a run off for a, a memento. Matthew going off the track there. Magudio between Magudio and Young Cow. He's still struggling out of Young Cow as well. Probably going to struggle to keep that 12th place as well. He certainly is. As Ben T. Smith now comes alongside him. Is Ben going to go for it here? Doesn't look like it is beating that now getting past pro life. Two seconds just is hovering around that margin between Paul Jones and Mark Boat. And that gap again has increased between second and third like it did on the wet tire skins as well. So Showing those two is Paul now responds with the fastest lap of the race, a 119.686. It was a 119.785 last time around for Mark Bow. The personal best for him as he is desperately trying to chase Paul Jones, but Paul responding and loving these conditions and loving the position he's in as well. Unfortunately, at the moment, there, there isn't many battles to speak of, really. It's, it's separated the grid. The conditions getting better. I don't think they're going to improve to a, to a point there with the dry tyres. May do is Matthew now starting to feel a little bit more confident getting the fastest lap there. again getting another fastest lap and he's acing that first uh, second sector as well he was actually down on his first sector but he did a pb in the third and a, a best overall middle sector and just shows like another half a second he's gained 
on his rival Mark Bow, who's trying to go for another win this season. But really, at the moment, everyone just sort of racing on their own. The only ones that are, are somewhat close together are Matthew and Murph. And is that a lap car between them? I think it must be. It is indeed. See where one of the lap cars is. Oh, look at that. But Matthew almost lost the car again. Everyone's struggling with turns two and three. Seems a lot slippier than, than everywhere else on the circuit, actually. Just trying to see if anyone is actually closing gaps here. Because it feels like that. This is pretty stable. I mean, the majority of the midfield doing 120, 121s right now. Which will mean no one's actually catching up, really. I'm sure we'll see another round of pits off. I'll be very surprised if these inters go all the way to the end. That might also mix things up a little bit. Obviously, people are going to have to serve five-second penalties from speeding in the pit lane from those previous round of pit stops. Just into that quiet phase of the race at the moment where... Everyone's just doing their own thing and especially just trying to still keep on the road. But as I said, it's night and day now, the conditions compared to what they were like earlier on. But the, the rain yet to, to falter, it's still falling. It has got better, got a bit lighter, but still. Yet to stop, the sun is yet to peek out of the clouds. And, and as I said, it's more than likely now we're gonna have a race which pretty much for the, the whole race is, is going to be wet, I think. I'd be very surprised if it doesn't. The track is getting better, but it's, it's nowhere near good enough uh, to even think about maybe the dry tyres at a later date. It's Paul Jones, that's another fast stop here. 119.989 for him. And another second sector fastest overall. Second sector just working really, really well for me at the moment. And the majority of the field done a one stop, shut up. Now going in for another stop and having to serve that five second as well, remember. And I'm sure he's going to go on to the intermediates. I think drivers may be trying to long it out, hoping that it would go to dry conditions and I say that Chuckle's actually retired, not opted to go for another set of intermediates and he's had enough of the sea thing. And again, look at that, when people come out of turn two and three, like Ben T. Smith is there, everyone doing the same thing, no one able to find grip at that point in the circuit. And actually, maybe trying to go a little bit slower through there. I'm actually gaining some lap time. It's just so unnatural to think like that. Going slow is actually to go faster, but sometimes that, that is the case in certain conditions. And the yellow flag is just for Chuckles' retired car. He would have actually cost Paul a tenth or two there. He certainly did, because he hesitated where the AI car with Chuckle was deciding where to, to park up. And I don't really know when you do with how it comes out. It should be something. There should be a button, a setting emoji going to on your screen where you can just retire from the race completely and just be back into the garage. But unfortunately, we haven't got anything like that for the moment, so we just have to retire in pit lane and, and then the AI does its thing after that. And now the system sorted itself out. Steve-O as well, I have to mention, I don't think he's in the lobby. 
Paul sets another fastest lap here and then Mark Bowe responds and the track is getting better as the lap time shows. We have a yellow flag there in that middle sector. That's for Matthew who's gone off at Ferragula and rejoins just ahead of Percival and then loses the back end of the car once again. Matthew now down in 14th place. Oh, boot neck within two tenths of Percival here. It's the first time we've had a, a close battle for a long time. A good five or ten minutes as the Haas tries to defend from that Alpha Towering. Matthew Pitts and he also retires from the race he's had enough as well a lot of drivers really not getting on with this circuit under these conditions and just remember on the wet tyre as well Jundi Sunday was quick actually on the extreme left and when he goes on to this intermediate hasn't shown the pace he did previously but he now pits as we're talking about him and surely for another set of intermediates surely yeah he's gone for a new set and i think again that might cause a lot of drivers to do the exact same thing Where is he going to pop out though? Just ahead of Jay Z by the looks of things. And this will be interesting to see how quick he actually is on that new intermediate tyre compared to drivers that have been on that tyre for a long, long time. It's showing me though, in my nice little app that I can see for some people, that the tyre actually not in a bad nick actually by the looks things on the intermediate. But they've all done 11, 12 laps on them. It's going to be a tall order to ask them to go to the end. And Jundi Sundi is looking quick on them already. So other drivers, if they know about it, have to respond to it. Because we've still got a fair way to go. Jundi Sunday might become a threat to, to others around him. And we see now Mark Bowe has himself a three second time penalty, is it? it? It certainly is. Three seconds for him. He does also have that fastest lap to his name as well. As we see Paul Jones, he's just had another fastest second sector. And again, a 118.8, that track getting a lot, lot better. And I think others actually hoping that the rain will stop and will go to dry conditions for the final five, ten laps, something like that. Jundi though, going the other way. Oh, full send Dave there. Absolutely on the limit of grip through Young Cow. And he was drifting in slow motion. And Jundi Sunday was wise just to hold back. Wait till he got himself sorted to get the overtake done and not get collected by him. So that was very mature driving from him. And he also, after waiting for full send Dave to get it all sorted, he also got the fastest lap as well. So... That new Inter looking very, very quick and closing in on every car that's in front of him at the moment. I think it's that decision whether you wait 
and hope the conditions get good enough to go on to dry tyres or pit now and hope it doesn't get dry later on. A bit of a gamble. And I mean, within a third of a lap, Jundi Sunday's gained a second on Bish on this new tyre, so as I said, looking very, very quick. And he has done two purple sectors, and this is going to be another fastest lap turn here if he can keep it on the road. Only just. I was took out the DRS board, and I'm sure it's going to be another fastest lap. It certainly is a 116.599 for him. It wasn't a fastest last sector, but crucially the first two, which have got the most amount of corners in and braking zones. He, he was fastest in both those sectors. And I wonder what everyone else is thinking on strategy. Oh my days, DRS enables. And we're still in wet conditions. We don't see that all too often. That could now change the game up a little bit. It make drivers think, do they go on to a new set of inters? Do we try the dry tyres at this point? Is it too much of a risk? Is it not? Paul Jones and Mark Bow both come into the pits. What are they going to go on to? Chuck's going to know they're in the pits. Is he going to follow them in as well? He certainly is. What are they going to go on to? Is it a set of dry? It's, it is indeed. It's a medium tyre for Paul Jones. It's a soft tyre for Mark Bow. And those guys all now thinking that the rain is going to stop, which it looks like it's about to. But is it dry enough yet? And has Jundi Sunday made the best call? Or did he make the worst call? He's decided to follow them in. I think it would have been wise. Oh! He's caused Bish to have a time penalty. He hit the back of him, which would have jumped him forwards. And, oh, Jundi Sunday, naughty. Naughty lad. Getting him a time penalty. He puts on the soft tyres as well. So pretty much everyone now who are coming down the start finish are going into the pit. Ben T. Smith thinking, no, it's not time for the drives yet. And we might have DRS enabled, but it isn't time yet. Or oh, maybe it is. Look at that. He's on the limited grip. But he's on 16 lap old inches as well. They'll be turning more and more into slips every lap as well. Suddenly, this race feels like it's just about to start coming alive here. The guys have got to be careful in these conditions still. It's still damp. It's not the best. But we should have the rain stop any minute. It's saying that on my screen. Let me get a, a slight update. I don't get to see that far in the future. But it's saying it stops. It's saying it stopped now. Uh, it hasn't. But that means it must stop any second. this scrap as well and then now on the wrong tyre it's gone dry the weather it's still still spitting but only just but that's certainly dried up far too fast we've only gone up a degree in temperature on track temperature 31 now so it was 29 to 30 it was in the wet conditions but again way too quick drying up here but we are going to get around 10 laps of dry racing for the final part of the race. Is Jundi Sunday here. He's certainly thinking about it. Thought better of it. And he could have had a better line into the corner if he'd uh, not uh, sat on the fence about what he was going to do. Could be close here. I think it is between Ben Smith and Bootneck. Mark Bone now setting the fastest lap as well. And this gap that in the intermediate conditions was two and a half seconds. In dry conditions, the positions have changed. Mark Bone now into the lead. He does have, remember, that three second time penalty. So he's going to have to get on up the road to make sure he grabs this win. I have a feeling 
That might not happen, though. Always grinding and Jundi Sunday here at De Cedar del Lago is a fish ghosting there for, for some reason. Not too sure why. Maybe he's not in the lobby at the moment. So the pack now starting to come together a little bit more. It just shows when we go to dry conditions. The driver's pace do uh, do start to sort of go up and down. And it brings drivers closer together. Mark Bow unable to break that DRS. He's only got one sector to be able to break it. And he's now spun around. And Paul Jones is taking the lead of the race. And he's lost it at Young Cow. He might even lose a place to Chuck. He's got a fighting chance here, maybe being second. The close battle at the moment. The closest other battle is between Murph Bootneck and Ben T. Smith. Murph, the only one out of those three who has a time penalty. And he has a three second time penalty. Jimmy Sunday still has that fastest lap to his name. Seconds to Mark Bowen Chuck now. Unfortunately for Chuckle though, it's a five second penalty. No, oh, Chuck, sorry, not Chuckle. It's a five second penalty. And so this isn't an even match by any means, but he is within one second, which he hasn't been all evening long. He's been in that lonely third place for, for quite a long time, actually. Chuck can, can get past Mark Boat before. And he's certainly closing the gap, obviously. DRS being the, uh, the main contributing factor to that.
and we've got a safety car deployed. We've got a DNF for Ben T. Smith. Where is he parked up the car? I think it's just here. Yeah, there he is in the wall on the left-hand side there. We've got a safety car deployed. That has blown everything out of the water now. It's going to bring the pack back together again. We've got enough laps to bring the pack back together again. And we're going to have about two laps, two or three laps at most of racing, where pretty much the whole pack, I think, are going to be back together again. Obviously, some drivers already coming in, we're waiting for the race leader, and those guys obviously will get out ahead and, and not be lapped. Well, they were they were close to being. So anyone who's watching on for the, the whole race, thank you very much. I mean, it hasn't been the most spectacular race up to now, but we could have a very, very close finish to the race. With everyone, obviously, opting to, to come in for a new set of softs, and, and why wouldn't you? And they should have some spare, seeing as we had these conditions in the race. And qualifying as well, which is of course where you get all your fresh sets to begin your weekend. Always grinding taking a risk, which I think is a risk that, as I say, week in, week out now, will not pay off. Paul just has to obviously keep it on the road. He's been very, very good up to now. Hasn't got himself a time penalty. I'll see if I can see if he's had any warnings. It's saying zero penalties, zero warnings. So he's had no warnings either. Sorry, that's my phone that keeps falling over because I've got like a makeshift stand for my phone. So I need to actually get myself something. Come on, phone, stay up. There we go. Yeah, I think we got it now. I believe we'll have this lap. Then I have a feeling that will be that will be it. We've got ProLive who is lapped. He's not going to be able to unlap himself, which is a shame. But there you go. We've got some that are yet to catch up yet. So it may, it may stay out a little bit longer to let the cars that were almost lapped catch back up. We technically have got enough laps to do that. We can get going again on lap 35. It will mean, of course, we won't have DRS again. Hopefully it'll be lap 34 we get going again. Don't think that's going to happen. Pretty sure that won't happen. We will get going again on the next lap. You never know though. The game might decide that this is enough and those few cars that are not caught up just yet as we wait for the driver in, in tenth place as his teammate Steve Oak is a lap car who is technically ahead of him. Are we going to see this car in this lap? Is it going to wait one more lap? I have a feeling it will wait one more. The other guys would have caught up at that point. Got ghosting on. So technically, drivers like Steve-O won't get in the way, even though Bootneck wants to get past him and physically have his place on the road. Just don't blame him, uh, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it unless Steve-O comes into the pits. Remember, it's only drivers in the top 10 who are going to score points here this evening. That's obviously an important one to remember as well. And we're going to have two laps of racing when we get going again, which will be the next lap. 
hopefully Percival and Morph will be able to catch up. The other problem they have, they're going at full, full tilt. Not going to be doing their tires any favours, but on the other hand they will. It's, it's a catch-22 really, they're going to have nice safe, warmed up tyres once they do catch up to the back of the pack. At this point, if I had the full track map on, I'd be lifting off a little bit, just waiting, knowing I've got a few corners to catch up, bring the tyres back down a little bit, wait a second, and then catch up to the group, uh, which, he, which he's not doing. We're still going to have to wait for Morph, though, and we're going to have two laps of racing. No DRS, so... Bootneck somehow been able to get past the lap car, and, and now Murph trying to do the exact same thing as Percival and Morph now catch up to the pack and we're going to have two laps of racing once we get the call from race control around this corner turn 11 the safety car will be in this lap there we go and Paul Jones now dictates the pace it's looking very very healthy for the Ferraris as well third and fourth at the moment Maybe, maybe a chance of a double podium for them here in Brazil. Paul doing a very fast, steady pace as he now gets going again. And I don't think he caught anyone by surprise there as Mark Bow stays with him. And we have two laps to go, ladies and gents. As we go down into turn one, the Senna S Super Striker trying to go left and right, this way and back to try and get that second place and hopefully have a chance to go for the win, which he probably never expected. 10 to 15 minutes ago, as we go down, the Retta Aposta, Chuck as well, close to the back of that Ferrari as well, keep an eye on him, Super Striker needs to get the place up here, he's only going to get hold up by Mark Bow because he's going to get that position anyway, as Chuck now getting past, always finding and splitting the two Ferrari drivers into turn 7 and 8. Now through turn nine, as we now go down this short little kink of a right-hander to Pico de Pato. Super Striker just not close enough at the moment, not got the speed in that middle sector to challenge. As I said, no DRS in these last two laps. It's Jundi Sunday now as they get their penultimate launch out of Young Cow. He's thinking about a move on, always grinding as well. He was super quick in the full wet conditions. Is he going to be super quick in the dry conditions on that new set of soft tyres? Always grinding was the only driver as well to stay out as Chuck now gets past Super Striker and Jundi suddenly gets past always grinding the two Ferrari drivers losing a couple of places in the S's as ProLive retires from the session and Super Striker trying to fight back. This is a fight for second place, not third place with Mark Bow having that three second time penalty. As we're on to the final lap of the race. Mark still hoping that he has a couple of warnings, Paul Jones, and maybe we'll get a penalty in this last lap and it'll open it up for him. I'm sure we're going to see a few drag races up this hill as we go through Young Cow for the final time. I think it's a dead cert for Paul Jones at this point. And are we going to see a drag race? We certainly are. As Paul Jones comes home to win his first race in Burnt Rubber Racing. And here comes Chuck and Super Striker to the line. And Super Striker takes second. Third will be Chuck. Bish and Jay-Z getting very close as well. And a few others dragging it all the way to the start-finish line. They see the checker flag. We're waiting for Morphin Stevo, who had had a... Um, Obviously an issue in the last two laps because he's fallen really far back and will be ending up in 13th The Steve-O was a lap down and I don't think he was here anyway. I think it was only 13 drivers that finished today uh, but Paul Jones uh, will be your race winner in his first ever race even though he's reserving for the McLaren team. So that's your finishing order 
for today's event. Paul Jones finished in first. Super Striker was second. The third was Chuck. Mark Bow dropped off the podium. Jundi Sunday was fifth. Sixth was always grinding. Bish was seventh. Bootneck was eighth. Ninth was Murph. Full send, uh, full send, uh, full send. Dave was tenth, and the last driver to collect points. Jay Z was eleventh. Percival was twelfth. Thirteenth was Morph. He had the fastest lap as well. Stevo uh, was fourteenth, but I think he'd left the session. Pro Live has been classified as well in fifteenth. Ben T. Smith, Matthew Chuckle, Lee, Super Striker, all did not finish today's race. So we're back again one more time this week and that's going to be tomorrow night of course for GP2 the extraordinarily close championship fight that somewhat opened up now Chuck has taken a little bit of a lead he's 13 points ahead of his main rival Pippo Kennedy uh, as we go into tomorrow's race in Portugal for that full qualifying session so make sure to be here tomorrow at eight o'clock UK time for that one hopefully it'll be a good one uh next week obviously back same time same place hopefully we won't have any issues with youtube next time for burnt rubber racing and we'll be in belgium that'll be a good one won't it belgium next week just normal standard format the 18 minute quality and then the the it's 22 laps at belgium i know that a 22 lap race after that so thank you very much for watching everyone uh, we'll see you tomorrow for gp2 and if we don't see you then, hopefully we'll see you for Burnt Rubber Racing next Wednesday night at 8.30. Until then, keep subscribing to the channel, keep liking the video, share the content with your friends and get them to join Burnt Rubber Racing and RTG. If they want to join some league races, just remember RTG is PlayStation only. Burnt Rubber Racing is cross-play, so anyone welcome in Burnt Rubber Racing. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll, we'll see you tomorrow night.